Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, um, back with another status update video. So I was able to make quite a bit of progress in terms of gear today. Um, so again, uh, I've been rolling with this plus three lightning staff here. Um, it's definitely been a huge help for DPS. And then I was also able to craft this amulet with plus one to a level of all lightning gems and then anoint elemental focus. That's also been a huge help. Uh, I was also able to get this elemental weakness on hit ring which has been really good for clearing. Um, and then for my body armor, I was able to get a Zealotry has increased effect implicit, which has been cool for a bit more damage as well. And then I was able to pick up an onslaught on kill boots from Syndicate, um, which helped out for uh, clear and movement speed. And then I have another little ring here, which I just crafted with a lightning damage essence. So I was able to make quite a bit of progress in terms of increasing my DPS. Uh, not so much in terms of increasing my character's survivability. Um, as you can see here, I'm working on clearing a tier 16 strand map, and as you can see here, the DPS is quite good. I'm generally able to kill the trash pretty well with Ark and the Nemesis monsters and Essence monsters. I don't really have much trouble, uh, much trouble taking them down either with Crackling Lance. As you can see here, Crackling Lance's damage is pretty crazy, and even in a tier 16 map, like a level 3, level 4 uh, Arc Nemesis monster isn't really that scary at all. Um, I mean, sometimes you do get a monster that's like really crazy, but you know, when you when you fight like a 6 Essence monster or like a you know an Arc Nemesis monster with like a bunch of terrible mods on it, like it does get kind of sketchy, but the damage is usually there. My problem more is just survivability. As you can see here, I'm running around with 3.8k life and 700 shield. Uh, definitely not the greatest. Um, I think like my I looked at PoE Ninja, and even though my character was like, I think last time I checked, I was like top two in SSF for Crackling Lance and like top ten in SSF for Arc, but like my life pool was like so much lower than everyone else's. So I'm definitely going to try to find ways to increase my life pool. Maybe I'll spec out of a little bit of damage on the tree to get a little bit more life. I just think that would help out my build a lot because like the damage is there. The damage is pretty good. I just wish I had more defenses at this point. I believe right now I'm running around with like 40% physical mitigation and like 75-75 block with glancing blows. So it's not terrible and the regen from the stone golem helps a lot, but yeah, I just wish I had more defense, like right there in my life. I almost died there. Um, but yeah, that's basically my little update for now. As you can see, the damage is great. Tier 16 duplicated map boss, didn't even do anything. But yeah, um, I, do, I do have a little bit of endgame content to showcase today. Uh, so that was a tier 16 map. This is a Maven Tenway. I was able to do this without dying, though I did get close to dying a couple of times. Uh, as you can see, I'm just running around and shooting Crackling Lance. I basically don't even use Arc in these situations. I just run around and cast Crackling Lance, throw out a wave of conviction, and then just hold down Crackling Lance. And as you can see, the damage is pretty good. Uh, could be a little bit better. If I had a conductivity on hit ring instead of elemental weakness on hit, the damage would be a bit better. Uh, and then of course I'm still using a 5 link, so you know, imagine if I had a 6 link, the damage would be even more ridiculous for both Crackling Lance and Arc. Um, but yeah, as you can see I'm just running around and yep, almost died there, gotta get more health. But yeah, I'm just running around and if I get hit it doesn't really matter because we have a lot of life regen from the stone golem. So it feels pretty good to do bosses with this. You don't have to worry about like, you know, if you get hit, then like you run out of flasks. Like you never have to worry about running out of life flasks with this build because of the regen. So it feels pretty good to play. Um, and then another thing I realized is like, if you're like ramping your damage on a boss and like you get four intensity, if you move away, you lose all the stacks. But if you flame dash away, you actually don't break intensity at all or like maybe you lose like one intensity if you use flame dash i'm not sure if you lose intensity or not but 
that's basically like the strategy that I found worked a lot for me. Just you hold down crackling lance until you get four intensity and then you just use flame dash to move around and then link arcane surge to flame dash so that you can uh, get more spell damage every time you move which is pretty cool. Um, as you can see here this is one of the new endgame bosses. This is the searing exarch boss. Uh, I did die a couple times in this fight, as you'll see shortly, but as you can see, as you can see the damage is pretty decent. Um, even on a 5 link, I'm basically able to, uh, to deal a pretty good amount of damage to the boss while staying relatively safe as well. I'm basically just running around throughout Wave of Conviction. As you can see, the boss is uh, slowed by 30% and he's shocked for 60%. Is that 50% or 60%? I can't see. Um, but yeah, anyway, like when, whenever you're fighting bosses, like you can see that the Shaper of Winter is really taken off here. Like just by attacking the boss, he's slowed by 40%. And you know, as you can see, he's pretty slow. Like he's not doing a lot of different things because uh, his action speed is slowed by 40%. So. This is like another little thing here where I think Shaper of Winter is really good. Uh, like, think about it, the boss does 40% less things. Like, if I didn't have that, he would be moving so fast, right? Um, sorry about the deaths. I, don't, I, I also did this fight blind. I've never done this fight before and I haven't watched the guys, so I don't know how to dodge any of these moves. Please don't take this as a boss guide video. This is definitely not a boss guide video. I definitely died a lot of times to preventable stuff, but yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Elementalist as an Ascendancy is pretty flexible. There's definitely a lot of different valid ways to build it. Like I, I like to go Shaper of Winter and I think I'm going to stick with that. You could also have gone Convergence, uh, which gives you 30% increased damage when you hit a unique boss for uh, four seconds and then it has like a four second cooldown before it can trigger again so like if you're running around you're gonna get anywhere between 15 to 30 percent more damage on a boss so you could go that route if you really want to kill bosses fast um you could also go for the uh, aegis node there's like a elementless aegis node bastion of elements or something where uh, you gain magic shield stuff based on how many notables you've taken. So I believe in the end game you get like a elemental aegis that blocks like anywhere from 1.5k to 2k damage. Uh, that one also seems pretty good. And then if you go that route, maybe you can consider going determination for physical mitigation and then you just go uh, bastion of elements for uh, elemental mitigation and then you really only have to worry about chaos. I think like in Enki's Arc Witch Guide, that's what he does, and it definitely seems pretty valid, but you do lose a lot of DPS by going Determination and uh, freaking uh, Bastion of Elements instead of like damage. So I don't really know if I want to play that defensively, especially considering that I'm a softball player. I'm just not really fascinated by building defense, although that's just a personal preference. Um, but yeah, personally I just like Shaper of Winter. I think the chill is really cool. Like this boss is slowed by like 40% and he's shocked by uh, 60%, which is really awesome in my opinion. Um, but yeah, um, that's just, this is just a little bit of boss gameplay that I'd like to showcase here. Uh, I mean, I'm definitely not the best mechanical player at these fights yet. I don't even know how these bosses work. I literally did these blind. So yeah, I definitely died a lot of times. I think here you're supposed to like run into the freaking circles and like stand there to like trigger them and then I walked into a slam because I suck. Um, but yeah, like despite not knowing boss mechanics, you can see that like the damage of the build is quite good. Like I'm still able to remove a large amount of his health every time I fire and I'm at poor intensity quite often. So yeah, um, as you can see, uh, builds pretty good. Um, may or may not post any more status updates after this. But you can kind of get a good grasp of how this build plays in maps and in endgame boss scenarios by looking at this, hopefully. So, yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Um, and yeah, maybe see you in the next one.